you talk about instilling trust. So to instill trust, I got the three C's I talked about. Connection, character, and competence. What's the next big item that's a, that's a characteristic for being a, an, a, an effective leader? It's been mentioned a couple times. The vision. Vision. Okay, component of that. I call it navigating. <laughs> we could spend a day on the topic of navigating. Navigating is probably the most fun uh, topic to, to teach. And no matter how much we've trained our people, no matter how much we've nurtured them, no matter how much we've developed them, there's still going to be problems and opportunities that are going to come up throughout the day that are going to require a leader, somebody to help navigate for them. <laughs> you know, it's said that anybody can steer a ship, but it takes a navigator to chart the course. And so I've got three components to be a good navigator. Number one is a good navigator has a mission. And a mission gives our team its purpose and it answers the question, why? Why are we doing what we're doing? It's the Steve Jobs, you know, we're out to change the world. It's the bigger picture that's bigger than, than, any, of, than any of us. And I had, I had lots of great quotes that came out of this whole concept when I was doing my interviews, but I, I want to share a couple of them that I think that were especially uh, well-versed well that you might want to write down. I talked to a gentleman named Billy Cordell in the police department. Uh, a lot of people probably know Billy. And I really enjoyed talking to him. But he, but he felt like he said, I was asking him the question about, you know, why do you think you know, you've been able to lead your team and maybe some other people uh, could, could have an opportunity to improve in there. And he said, you know, I, he said, I feel like at certain times, we spend a lot of time teaching the hows and the whats, and we don't spend enough educating our people on the why. And you know, if we can get them connected to the bigger picture, the bigger purpose, he said there's so much creativity and so much smarts in our organization, it really makes my job easier because they start helping me solve problems. I met with a, a gentleman named Alonzo. Steve Jobs says that management is about persuading people to do things they don't want to do, where leadership is about inspiring them to do things they never thought possible. And of course, Steve Jobs has got a great reputation as a great innovator, as a great change agent. The other day, I showed up at church, and I got there a little bit early, and my family was meeting me there, and there was a gentleman sitting next to me. And I struck up a conversation with him, and it turned out that he was from Apple. He was here in the 80s and worked in the production facility over in Carrollton. And I, 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 I love Apple products, and I'm a Steve Jobs fan, so I said, well, tell me about that. What was that like? He goes, Mark, he goes, I'd go back to that environment in a heartbeat. I go, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, you know, we were working 16-hour days, and we were cranking up. But you know what? It was probably the highlight of my career. And I said, well, what, what? I mean, how did he, how did he? Steve at the time, this is before Steve left the first time. I said, how did he get you guys to work that, that hard, work that number of hours? And he goes, Mark, he goes, we were changing the world. He goes, we really thought we were changing the world. It wasn't about building a computer. It wasn't about showing up to, you know, put a product together or do a mundane job. Jobs was excellent at getting them to link to a bigger vision of what they wanted to accomplish and to inspire them to do something that, you know, you look back on that, changed the world, I mean, but that, that had that team extremely motivated to uh, move forward and really 
uh, make things happen and go that extra, go that extra effort. So let's talk about some of the leaders that you've had in your life. So think about somebody maybe is a leader that's made an impact on you. Maybe it was a, a coach, maybe it was a teacher, maybe it's somebody you work for today, maybe it's somebody in, in city government, maybe it's somebody that you haven't met but that serves as a role model for you. And, and kind of write down in your notes that first name that comes to mind is somebody that might fit that leadership role for you. Kind of think about who that person is. And then think about what are some of the things that that person does? Or what are some of their characteristics that have enabled that person to be a great leader for me? Anybody want to take a, offer up some suggestions here for the group? So think about that leader and think about that person that really made an impact on you, that really inspired you or convinced you to do something maybe at the time that you didn't think you could get to. And what are some of the traits that come to mind when you think of that leader? Visionary. Visionary, excellent, thank you very much. Visionary, anybody else? Great listener. Enthusiasm, so kind of attitude. Okay, excellent. Listen. Listen, okay, I didn't see who said that back on the back row, thank you very much. Yeah, good listener. So what, talking all the time? Two ears, one mouth. Yeah, two ears, one mouth. <laughs> Yeah, use them proportionally. Uh, strong character who walked his talk. Strong character walked his talk. Excellent, excellent. A motivator. A motivator, okay. So kind of paint and vision, kind of enthusiastic all together there. Okay, excellent. Anybody else? Someone who relates to the whole staff from our entry level to the Relates to everybody. So connected with you because they related with you especially well. Okay, excellent. Innovative, came up with new ideas. So kind of that whole idea of being out there first. Right, and inspires it. And it inspires it. Out of those traits that we've talked about, which do you think might be foundational? In other words, we gotta have that in the beginning before we can move on to anything else. Anybody wanna take a guess at that one? Think about, it's a, it's a word that wasn't used, but I'll give you a hint, go ahead. Trust, bingo, yeah, trust. And trust is really the foundation of leadership, isn't it? If we don't trust a leader and they're trying to go first and they're trying to take us someplace, right, and they want us to follow, we're not gonna follow if that trust isn't there. Now, we might work for them, we might show up, we might go through the motions because we've gotta feed a family, we've gotta keep our job, and we're gonna go through those things. But in terms of putting that extra effort in, to really help and get the organization to move forward. It really takes the ability to instill trust, doesn't it? Excellent answer, thank you very much. So I, th I think of trust as really being the foundation of leadership. I think trust is the glue that holds everything together for us. Now I teach that there's some components to building trust. Does anybody have any ideas of what they do to specifically instill trust in their, in their teams that they wanna share? Follow through. Follow through, okay. So when you say you're gonna do something, follow it through to completion, excellent. Anybody else? Set the example. Set the example, so walk the talk, okay. Anybody else? In other words, give them an opportunity and then just verify with them that things are going well. Okay, so empower them and then check in as a way to kind of kind of build trust in, in you. So I, I teach, in, in all excellent answers, I teach Three, three components called three C's that you might write down and, and share these with your team if you haven't already. I think these are three great ways to take all the great comments I got out of the room and summarize them. But one of them is character. And I know this was mentioned as a way of building trust, but character determines who we are, who we are determines what we see, and what we see determines what we do. And that's why we can never separate a person's actions <coughs> from the leader. And character, I believe, shows up in a lot of things. It shows up, you mentioned following through. You know, and, and, and one, of the, one of the comments that I heard when I was talking to folks about why people don't change at the city, has anybody ever heard of something called the flavor of the month? Mm -hmm. You know, it's another flavor of the month that we really committed to it. And I really believe that character really defines our ability to follow through and build that 
trust with our uh, with our team members. I was talking to uh, Monty Hall, who's in IT, and he was talking about rolling out IT projects, and maybe I had a soft spot for Monty because I come from technology. But even with your best intentions, it's like technology, your vendors and, and things can fall through. And he was telling me about some projects where that had happened. And, and I said, so what's your strategy for making sure that you're building character and maintaining that trust? And he said, you know, Mark, it's just all about being open and honest. I do everything I can up front to make sure I'm setting the right expectations and not over promising. And if something happens, I want to be out there to tell them as quickly as possible and as proactively as possible so that you maintain that high character, you maintain that high trust. And I think our followers, you know, they don't expect us to be perfect, but they do expect us to be of high character. I think people will give us a pass. They don't expect everything to go perfectly all the time. We all live in the real world, but they do expect us to be of high character and to follow through on the commitments and to be open and honest and, and direct with them. Uh, number two is connection. <clears throat> and connection is one of my favorites. I actually teach a, a full day workshop on this. Uh, John Maxwell has a learning system called Everyone in Any Base Can Connect. And connecting is really about our ability to identify with our people in such a way that we gain influence with them. I think of connecting is really as the way to uh, get on an emotional level i mean it's a it's a relationship i'm not just spewing facts and figures i'm just not giving you data but i'm really learning about you as a person and what i what i find with leaders especially younger leaders is it's really easy to connect with people that are like us so if i'm a cowboy fan and you're a cowboy fan and we get together every monday and we talk about the game it's pretty easy for us to get a connection going. We connect on common ground. Where it's more difficult is those people that aren't quite like us. Those are different. And a lot of, a lot of leaders fail as they grow up into an organization because they've got to learn to lead people that are different. Different personalities are not wired the same way they are. You know, I grew up in sales. So as a first level sales manager, I could hire salespeople just like me and we all got along great. When I got promoted up, now I was managing some finance people, some marketing people, and they were very different, and I had to work very hard. Well, first of all, I learned some tough lessons about not connecting with them, where that led me. But I had to be really work really hard to learn to connect with people that were wired very, very differently than, than I was. And so it's a real challenge, I think, for leaders to make sure you're connecting with everybody on common ground. <coughs> Part of the reason I showed the video, I have a library.